Hey guys, welcome back to Mentorship CEO. If you're new or returning and haven't subscribed yet, guys, hit that subscribe button. Guys, first and foremost, I wanna send my appreciation for all the new subscribers and old subscribers that stay supporting me. Uh, YouTube is not like TikTok and these short, quick, real type videos. Uh, any type of subscriber or supporter or follower on YouTube really shows some type of loyalty and dedication to your content um, because I appreciate whatever uh, you guys watch whether it's three minutes five minutes of a 15 minute video that shows you know some type of dedication and interest in the video and the content so I appreciate that guys but also hit that subscribe button and give the video a like because that helps with the algorithm so today what I'm doing I have some errands to run um, but I wanted to bring the camera out and talk to you guys uh, about the Omega Swatch collaboration, which is pretty new, um, and also some of the pieces that I'm looking to purchase in the next week or so, week or two. So guys, stay tuned and uh, let's get into this video. So guys, today's video I'm going to be doing a drive through uh, Surfside and down all the way to Ball Harbor while I'm talking about the topics that I mentioned in the intro. So let's get into it. With the Omega Swatch collaboration, I don't know really how I feel about it. At this point, I'm 50-50 until it comes to the point where it's in the stores, which I believe will be in March, uh, the 26th of March, they'll be in stores so where you'll actually be able to see it and feel it. But as of now, I'm a little skeptical, you know, uh, some of the pieces I looked at, I guess, don't seem to be up to my, you know, style. The only one maybe that I like would be the black one, which is the closest one to look like the Moonwatch. So if you guys don't know, the Omega Speedmaster Moonwatch is a watch that has a lot of history and is well respected in the watch community. Uh, the case size doesn't really match up to my wrist size or my liking, but a lot of other people love the watch. This watch, the collaboration with Swatch, is the actual same size. It's not the reduced or the Omega, like the Omega Reduce, which is a 39 millimeter, but it's a 32 millimeter size, which I believe a lot of Omega enthusiasts will like and appreciate. That is actually the same size as the Moon Watch, but. For me, it's the colors. I don't know, I don't know, guys. Like the, the, the Tiffany blue, I get it. They're just following the trend. The red, I don't know about that. The, the brown, maybe, but like I said, the black, yes. And there's 11 colors. So, there's gotta be something for someone to like, you know, for anyone to at least choose which one. But for me, of course, the black is the most, you know, subtle, low-key uh, color overall I believe it's gonna do well but some somehow I think it could do hyper well and in, in, in a point where it's like what the hell is going on here because the price that they're gonna be retailing it at is under 300 so it's pretty much probably gonna be 20 260 dollars probably and I feel like they're gonna try and make it some type of limited type of watch maybe I'm not sure the details yet and I feel like it's gonna be like a thousand dollars on the secondary market on the gray market or maybe two thousand it's probably gonna run up guys it's gonna it's all about what us the people decide you know um, and of course the the quantity of the watches that will be available I believe it's just like how Rolex with the the Oyster Perpetual the, the, the Tiffany, the yellow, the green, you know, the red. Just with that, how the price just inflated and went crazy. I believe that's something like what could happen with this Swatch Omega collaboration Moon Watch. The thing is, where I think it may do well is because Swatch is a respected a respected brand, and Omega is a respected brand. Regardless of the the, the price, yes, to me I was like that low. Wow, like the quality has to be cheap. Maybe the movement might be a little on the low end, but I feel like just because of these two quality, well-known brands collab collabing together and creating such a unique piece that's gonna be talked about, definitely talked about, and it doesn't even matter if it's a love-hate type of talk where 
Some people love it, some people hate it. That's sometimes the best mixture to create some of the most controversial, high-priced uh, items. So I'm excited to see what happens on the 26th and beyond because the way the watch market works these days, you never know what to expect. So let's see guys, comment down below what you guys think about this uh, collaboration with Omega and Swatch and making this, you know, this moon watch with multiple variations of colors. Uh, the, the material is a ceramic, a, like a bio ceramic, it's like a plastic and ceramic mixture, uh, which I don't know how, you know, technical that is as far as having that ability to, to incorporate those two and make it uh, a solid watch I don't know how it feels I don't know the weight but until I get to see it in person and feel it I would be able to to say but yeah guys let's stay tuned because right now is 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 the way the market is is you never know what what to expect like a moon watch is going around maybe five thousand six thousand dollars and this is going so you'll stick a price retail for 20, uh, well, I keep saying 20, $260. So you never know what to expect. Um, yeah, so I'll keep my eyes out on that. Of course, I'll make a video once things really start going and seeing how, how the sales turn out with these watches. But uh, like I said, guys, comment down below and let me know your opinion on these watches and which one's your favorite so far. Of course, through picture um, and video maybe because it's not really out yet for the general uh, public. Now, let me talk about what I'm having my eyes on, whether it's for long term or short term. Currently, I'm looking at some Rolex Explorer 2s, specifically the 16650 and the 16670. Um, right now, they're priced on the gray market, of course, secondary market, because these watches are, you know, 80s, 90s uh, year. Um, right now, they're in the range of 9,000, 12,000. You know, it depends where you look. If you look on Chrono 24, you know, things could be extreme and not really low these days. You don't really see too many low prices on Chrono. Everything is maybe right where it should be and way above. Uh, let me mention, guys, right now I'm on Collins. Uh, this is Surfside. We're just getting into Ball Harbor. Uh, the mall would be to the left coming up after after 95th Street, uh, which that mall is really nice, guys, uh, where all, all your luxury shopping, you could be done. They do have a, a Rolex AD there. I haven't been able to make it there. I actually make, made a phone call and I had the same runaround uh, that I would have in person, but just via telephone. Uh, and of course, guys, it is spring break, but this side of, you know, Miami Beach don't really have too much of the craziness like Ocean Drive where down on South Beach would be. Uh, it's a more chill, relaxed uh, area where, of course, some people do figure out, okay, let's move up here and, and enjoy the beach and it gets crowded, but it's definitely nothing like South Beach. Okay, so I'm looking at these Rolex Explorers, uh, black dial to be specific, because these variations only two. Uh, it's a white dial, which they call the Polar, and the black dial. The white dial over the years have seemed to be the most desirable uh, option. Um, and the white dial kind of goes for a little bit more. But for some reason, I want to own one. I don't know why, I just want to. They uh, they come in a size 39, 39 millimeter, which is like the perfect sweet spot for me. I always tell people like, hey, 40 millimeter is just my breaking point. Uh, like, of course, the Submariner. Of course, it depends on the dimensions, but uh, yeah, 40 millimeter is the max that I would really enjoy and love for myself. Um, but yeah, the Explorer is a 39 mil, which seems to be like a nice little sweet spot. Uh, I've seen the Explorer in person 
I've tried it on my wrist, I've seen it on other people, and I've appreciated it equally every time. And I think it's about time that I own one. And out of these two, I'm trying to see where the most value is because as I mentioned, they're different reference numbers, uh, different years. So of course the movement may be having something a little different in them. So that's my job right now is to do the research and figure out which one would be the best buy. I'm also looking at uh, Rolex Datejust uh, Blue Dial. Uh, of course, Jubilee bracelet. Not of course, but because they do come in oyster bracelets. But I'm looking at a Jubilee bracelet. Um, it's a 16013, and that's with the plexiglass, the plastic, for you guys who may not know what the plexi is, and the acrylic. And it's just something about that watch. I've had one before, I, ha I had the 1601. A uh, similar color dial, pretty much the similar look watch because they had the same crystal. And I regretted selling that watch. That watch was unpolished. It was a, it was a 1974 Rolex Datejust 1601, unpolished, mint condition. The, the the person that I purchased the watch off of received it, was handed down from his dad, and he seemed like he was in a tough situation, so he had to sell it. He said, so he knew the history of the watch. He said he only wore it maybe three, four times at like a special occasion. The dad pretty much didn't really wear it much. He just had it, you know, well kept uh, in like a safe. And that watch, I regret selling, guys. I'm not gonna lie on, on that one. So I'm hoping that one that I'm looking at, I'm able to pick it up and keep that one and build a connection with that watch. But the Explorers, my plan is to just wear it, enjoy it, and see how it goes. You know, it's like, I don't know yet. Um, but the day just, I know exactly how I'm gonna connect and feel about this watch. If you guys who are not too crazy about watches, I might sound crazy talking about connecting to a watch, but uh, for, you, for you guys who do know, you know. <laughs> That's how it is sometimes. So, right now we're heading down into the Sunny Isles area. Uh, for you guys who are interested in any of these kind of crazy things, the nude beach is to the right. Uh, they have a uh, parking to the left. You park and then you can go under uh, a little tunnel to get across to the beach over to the right. Today is a beautiful day as you guys can see. Blue skies, a few clouds on the inland side to the left. But other than that, beautiful day and beautiful area if you guys want to come relax and go to the beach so guys i've hit that 12 minute point in this video um hopefully you guys enjoy it like i said comment down below your opinion everything guys your opinion can, can never be wrong you know it's, it's your opinion let me know what you think about this whole omega swatch collaboration and let me know what you think about the three watches that I mentioned that I have my eyes on. I have a few others that I'm looking at, but uh, that's gonna make the video a little bit too long. So guys, thanks for watching this episode of Talking Watches While Driving Through Surfside slash Sunny Isles. Guys, hit that subscribe button, give the video a thumbs up. Also guys, follow me on Instagram, mentorship.ceo and I'll see you in the next video.